All right. Looks like we are live. Um, well, hey, all right, let's start over. <laughs> All right, that was out of the system. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just keep rolling. All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Roger Daniel for the Magnificent World of Toys. Today we got something a little special for you. I have a few friends joining me today. I have Travis uh, for the Enemy Planet and Jack Grimmett, also known as Graph Angel One. Why don't you say hi, everybody? Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. Yeah, so yeah, I know there's a little awkward. We're just kind of um, testing this out right now, and this is something that we're hoping to be doing possibly maybe once a month or something like that, or I mean, I don't know, whenever we can. Um, but yeah, this is basically, uh, we're basically gonna be talking pop culture, toys, comics, art, stuff basically that we're into and that we feel you are into and you may find of interest. And so today, uh, well, Monday being May the 4th, we want to start it off by, um, I guess, uh, going into Star Wars stuff. Um, so I guess, uh, um, Travis, why don't, why don't you start off by telling us what has been your favorite your favorite Star Wars film? And that's from episode, look, and this is only from episode four and six. Well, that's it, the only answers yeah. that you would get from me. So it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, um, we 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 touched on this, you know, briefly a little bit, just a you know a little bit earlier, where. I think it, we're, we're of a similar age, the three of us. Uh, I think maybe Daniel and I have a couple years on Jack and um, Star Wars probably meant different things to us as a result of that. I mean, uh, I think Daniel and I were certainly of an age where we were able to at least see Jedi in the theater. Um, yeah. And so I think that definitely impacted the way that I viewed those movies and what I liked about them and which ones I liked. That's changed over the years, of course. I did see Jedi in the theater, I think twice. That was, I'm sure, you know, the first movie I ever saw twice in the theater. I do have a very vague recollection of um, just the ending of Empire and a drive-in. So that'll, that'll, you know, if you do the math, you can figure out uh, my, my age in there somewhere. So as a kid, because of Jedi being the first one that really I connected to in the theater. Before that, I had the toys, you know, we used to love playing everything Star Wars on the playground. Um, Jedi was what I loved, and that still has a very sweet emotional spot for me. But now as an adult, and I've watched them all, you know, how many times have we seen these movies, you know? I mean, it's so many. But at this point, for the for the aspect of filmmaking, for what was done within the script, with the way that the story was told, I think Empire is now my favorite. Some of the uh, characters that they introduced, the, the scenes, uh, the emotional and thematic way. So, so Jedi has that emotional appeal to me, but Empire, uh, mm -hmm. just I think, is a superior film. Okay. Um, you guys, do you guys relate to that? Does that? No, uh, yeah, I mean, I, well, Jedi was the first one I saw in theaters as well, and and it was just a, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's a close second to A New Hope. Obviously, A New Hope. I mean, that's just a great movie. It, it's just a great film. It's not just the greatest Star Wars film. It's just one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah, well, in my opinion, right? Um, but yeah, like Jedi was amazing. The creatures, the worlds, everything. I mean, I remember being a kid, I didn't have Star Wars toys, but I had toy soldiers. And what I, so what I would do is I'd dig these holes in the dirt and put these little twigs sticking out, make my own Sarlacc pit, right? And then I'd use my, my shoes as like the skiffs and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> but, but, but that was- I want of, to see this acted out. I want to see yeah, this reenacted. That, that was my, my Star Wars world. Um, uh, <laughs> But uh, Jack, so I mean, yeah, you're obviously the younger of us, not by much, but still, I mean, I think you probably would have, well, why don't you just tell us your, yeah, just out of, out of episode four? 
I think uh, so. So I don't know how much younger I am than you guys. Man. I'm, 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 I'm like thirty something or other. I don't know. Yeah, that was my guess. Anyway, I um, I never saw any of the originals in the theaters. No. Um, I was probably old enough. When did Jedi come out? See, I'm a terrible person. I can't remember. Eighty three. Yeah. All right. So so I was one. All right. Um. So I never saw any of them in the theaters. But I, um, I would definitely go with Empire being one of the coolest movies in general, just because uh, that idea of like bad guys win kind of kind of hurts a little bit, you know, like but it causes some feeling there. But I connect with the Ewoks, man, like a little kid running around with yeah. the older brother's toys. I connect with the Ewoks. So, so Return of the Jedi is one of my favorites. It's just like, it was made for little kids in a sense, you know? Yeah. My brothers used to have this, this rubber Ewok mask that they, they, they wore for like Halloween once. And little Weeble Wobble me would get a hold of this mask and walk around the house and like bump into things and, and pretend to be an Ewok when I was a kid. So, I don't know. I like the Ewoks. Because that, that was what the Ewoks did in your mind, was they bumped into things. Well, yeah. I mean, like, they kind of just... I mean, that's probably how, how the, 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 the older kids at the time saw them, yeah. Yeah, you know? So, yeah, I, I, I think I'd go with uh, Return of the Jedi. You know? Well, and, and the reason I brought up that, that schism was because I know, like, you know, I've talked to, I have older friends who saw it, you know, in the theater, Jedi in the theater when they were teenagers. And they hated the Ewoks. They hated that kind of stuff. And so, like, that was, I think, in a sense, the beginning of Lucas's foray into how do I make this appeal to kids versus how do I make this just an exciting movie. Uh, yeah. That was, in a sense, the, you know, at least the, those, those older kids at the time, that was the precursor to what we would eventually see. And I'm sure we all have similar feelings about Jar Jar, that kind of thing. That's where, for me, it does have that emotional impact because I loved the Ewoks. Uh, I was terrified of the Rancor, you know, the yeah. second I was watching it like this, like I, you know. Um, so that's where I think looking at it fondly through, through a, you know, a nostalgic lens, definitely that has some of the best moments for me. Looking mm -hmm. at it through my current critical adult eyes who that scrutinize everything that's where i go back to empire being the superior film in the sense of filmmaking yeah oh i'm sorry i'm sorry but but the world is having that debate right now too with with infinity war and endgame yeah and, sure. and, and empire is you know infinity war it's like it's that darkness, man. And it, it's something that every rebel nerd wanted to embrace. You know, we're playing, you know, the, 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 the Imperial March over, you know, the binary sun theme, you know, like, uh, what do you think? What do you, what do you think, Dan? Uh, no, well, I, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't seen either Infinity War or Endgame yet. So it's, uh, uh, that's a story in and of itself. It, it's odd because it, it's always like the, the, the visuals that stuck with me, right? And not so much the story. And, and so it was like, well, this is cool, you know, as a toy, or this is cool as this, or this is cool as that. And, and, and so, and it was funny because I didn't see Empire. It took a long time for me to see Empire. I mean, it was like the first movie I ever saw was Jedi, right? Then maybe about five or six years after that, I saw A New Hope, but I was still pretty young to really understand what I was looking at. And it wasn't Jedi. So I didn't like A New Hope as much as I like Jedi. And then I'd say maybe a few years after that, I saw Empire Strikes Back. And I was like, wait a minute, there's three movies? And they're, 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 there's a sequence, you know? And and so, so I mean, so yeah, that, that was kind of my, my situation. And then another thing about Jedi is that, you know, it's like I never looked at Sam the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, because of the Sarlacc pit, stuff like that. But, but I mean, 
Yeah, I, I just can't because I haven't seen Endgame or Infinity War. I just can't compare. And 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 so and then I probably, but yeah, that, that's kind of my take on it. I, I speaking I for for oh, you know you're saying you didn't see these movies like for me growing up, like I don't have a memory of of not having all three of them in my life we from an early age we had a vcr in the house and we were dubbing tapes so like i i don't remember a time that we didn't have star wars and empire on a dubbed videotape um that tied in with everything so even if there were nuances that we didn't get um for me as a piece they all went together and and you couldn't have the one without the other two. They were they were of a whole. You started to touch on something, Daniel, that I think is also part of what I think worked for those movies and maybe why there's elements of Empire that I think uh, appeal to me uh, today, which is that so much of the Star Wars universe, when it was starting out, we didn't have the answers for who these characters were which is why when we had toys of them and we knew nothing about their backstory, we knew nothing about their characterization, we got to create all that. We didn't have to create the character, you know, out of clay wholly, but we got to define what this character was as they interacted with the characters that we did know, you know, the skiff guards or, you know, uh, Bib Fortuna or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be with these, these characters who, you know, look at, walrus man or something from from new hope who didn't even have a name when he first came out it was a descriptor and there was an element to that that because we didn't it was clear that this universe was bigger than what we were being shown on screen and there weren't a million books and comics and all and cartoons and all these backstory things to fill in those gaps we had to provide that and i think that's where, and, and it's easy for something like Empire to leave pieces off screen and to make you wonder what's going to happen next. And you have to wonder for three years. Um, and I think, I think uh, um, Infinity War had, had a lot of that same, you know, momentum behind it where you're setting things up to leave anticipation for what will happen next versus something like uh, Endgame or Jedi, where it now all has to be wrapped up in a bow. And for me, part of what appealed to me fr through Star Wars at the beginning was that great unknown that we didn't have answers and insight into, and we had to fill that in ourselves, and our imaginations went wild. You know, it, it's funny how you, you, you mentioned how you created a lot of the backstory with the figures. Uh, I remember, what was his name? I'm looking at him now. Uh, Mama Nadan, the dude who's... Mama Nadan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, I had no idea what that toy was, who that, who that character was, anything about him. But he's one of the ones who stand out to me as a little kid running around the house with this spinning little head. And, like, like he would just join adventures with other toys too because like everything was an amalgamation when i was little like he would yeah. join up with he man and stuff but it's no backstory to who that character was from exactly so so while we're on the topic of toys let, let's let's i guess um that's kind of a good uh time to segue to i guess another thing we want to do sort of like our favorite star wars toy like kind of show and tell um uh, jack why don't you why don't you um Tell us about what you have for us today. You know the story. <laughs> how did you How did you acquire these? Uh, and and um, yeah. So just uh, yeah. Let, I guess so, I'll grab one of those and 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 uh, and uh, just uh, let us know. So for me, I um, I never had a huge you know Star Wars toy collection. Like I had hand me downs from my older brothers, which literally were played with until they were turned to dust. But for years growing up, there was like too much for me to collect. And I was already in with all these other things. It was just too much. And then, I don't know, a couple months ago, I end up at the Goodwill out here in the Coachella Valley. And I don't know what happened, man. My guess is somebody's ex-wife 
decided that they were going to get rid of the bins of Star Wars figures piled up in the garage. Um, and now these are all these are all from um, uh, the the 2000s era. But I bought each one of these for like 2.99 a piece. I don't know if it's going to focus on it, but from the Goodwill. And I bought like a whole collection, dude. So I took R2 as one of my favorites because R2 is pretty awesome. And then I took uh, I took my Ewoks because, like I said, I'm an Ewok fan. Now, I must have bought 50 to 100 figures that day. Like, I bought everything. And my wife was there with me and encouraging me. She's like, if you leave any behind, you're going to be upset. So we bought an entire Star Wars collection, which I'm tempted to open up on May the 4th so everyone can see. Um, you should live stream that. Yeah. And then one more, one more toy that I kind of kept is not actually a human toy, but this is a dog toy <laughs> of Wicket. And, and, and my min pin who passed away, this was one of his favorites. So I'm going to, it's been chewed on. It's got some slobber on it, but I'm going to keep this thing forever. So. I, I like to imagine a bunch of people watching this were getting excited when you were talking about finding just all of these Star Wars at a goodwill. And then they see that it's the 90s power of the Force line. And they're like, oh, yeah, we've all seen those at goodwill. Yeah, that's, that's it, fine. No, it, Not it, to take away from the story and finding the whole collection at once. You, you it's know, the sheer volume. Yeah, it's exactly. Amount, you know? Uh, no, uh, the the thing though is that you know well there yeah the of course there, the 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 thing about the power of the force figures is you know I actually prefer those than the than the than the originals because of, they were a little more detailed right mm -hmm. and and they are easier to find I mean I found um, you know I sold it but I remember I found. Uh, there's a guy selling a bunch of them like on Craigslist. I mean, he sold me like 300 package figures, right? Mm -hmm. And it was funny because he had like these, they're like in these cardboard barrels, right? And and like I, and back then I had my truck and I remember I drove home with them and my wife was like, what on earth is that? And I'm like, you know, I just got like, this is like the dude, I think I spent like 50 bucks or something. It was like, like something ridiculous, right? But I was happy because you know, at that time, all my nephews and my son and all that, they were very much into Star Wars, all the movies, right? And so, you know, I was giving some away and this, and then I still had, I gave them, I gave about a hundred away and then like the rest, I sold them. I ended up selling them at Frankenstein. And then I kind of regret it because now that I have the space to probably, where I would have been able to display them and stuff, I don't have them anymore. And so it's just like, it, you know, and 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 so I'm kind of on a mission. It would be great to eventually. What I want to get is Return of the Jedi stuff. That's what I want to get. And so I've been getting a lot of Ewoks. I'm like an Ewok hoarder. So it's like right now I got like over a dozen. But you know, anytime I see them out in the wild, I, I snatch it. You know, or, or, or is that is that only the vintage ones or anything yeah. related to Ewoks? Either the vintage Kenner, whatever, whatever, whatever line, whatever era, I, I pick it up. So, yeah. so are you are you gonna are you excited about the new Black Series one that was uh, I guess it's Weequay who's I haven't seen first it first coming out I haven't seen it's it pretty good yeah yeah and so um, but yeah that's kind of a you know and I would like to eventually get the Ewok Village stuff like that have them all in there but yeah I, I mean I, I don't know I guess maybe I should go into my stuff <laughs> yeah what's what's your show until what's your Star right. Wars uh, well boy there uh, I have to say my favorite. It's probably my, hold on a second. I don't want to give you any nightmares here, Travis, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, this uh, it's, it's Rancor. And, and you know, it was like, this one, you know, I actually got it at INS Collectibles and you know, he, uh, they give it to me at a good price only because it has like this weird, I don't know, it, it has like this weird, I don't know. We were trying to figure out what happened to it, and it had it had like something in there that just like it melt it like like I don't know. Maybe somebody threw a match in its throat or something, and it kind of burned. Like I, somebody was trying to make him eat lava or some some kid. And you know that's what I like about this kind of stuff is that you know there's a story behind it. You know some kid yeah. 
you know, played with it or did something to it and that happened. And so, but still, this is probably like, you know, my, my, my all time favorite stars figure aside from, you know, well, my, my, uh, well, yeah, my hot toys, uh, new hope cast. And then, um, then this Jen Erso, which is actually, you know, um, yeah, I think her movie was probably my favorite one outside of like the original series and stuff. I don't even remember the name of it. What is it? Rebel One or Rogue, Rogue One. One? Rogue One. Yeah, Rogue One. Yeah. So that's, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me as it relates to the Star Wars stuff. You know, I almost uh, had brought the uh, the same Rancor because I still have the one that I had as a kid. Um, so I've had it the last, you know. 35 years or something like it's been a long time still have the same one now that was the second one um that i had the first one we broke its arms off because they were attached by rubber bands and that's how they get this in and out movement um but yeah i've had that just for for literally decades now so i almost brought that but like many collectors when you say what's your favorite Often that means what's the most recent thing you bought. <laughs> our favorite thing is the newest thing in our collection. And so I did just pick this up. Now, this is very different from what you guys are showing. This is very recent. Yeah. This yeah. is the new Black Series uh, probe droid from the beginning of Empire when they're on Hoth. And I've just, <laughs> I've always loved uh, this design. I always loved the sound that the thing made. So I have this in multiple iterations. I earlier picked up, this is, this is not the same thing, and I'll show you here in a second. This was the, uh, what was it called? The, this came out just a couple years ago. The force push thing uh, came with a Darth Vader figure, like a three and three quarter scale figure. And um, looks very similar until you put them side by side. And then you see the size difference. I was curious to see if the sculpt was the same, to see if they just scaled up a digital sculpt. There are minor differences, but the placement of everything seems pretty much identical. So I suspect that is what they did. Originally, this was a stand-in with my Black Series. I was just like, oh, that's, you know, it's just a smaller probe droid. Surely they made them in different sizes. But uh, having this new one now, it's just, it's beautiful. Everything articulated at the hinges and the head rotates and no. the antenna goes up and down. No, Travis. It's, it's the small things. I just saw on Instagram, um, Action Figure Insider, he posted like, I guess the Disney Store exclusives. Is that, yes. is that it? No, yeah. that one, and it's popping up on eBay from Japan for ridiculous prices. I think that one is supposed to be um, die cast. Yeah. like all the other Disney store ones. So this one's plastic, um, like Black Series, and that's how they're able to support the weight on this stand. I don't think a die cast one would support like this. I'm not sure what they're going to provide to make that happen. But if that does come to the state sides uh, and uh, is affordable at Disney store prices, I'll pick that up. If it's going to remain uh, an import or, you know, having somebody ship it from Japan, you know, I don't know that I need to spend $70, $80 on it. But... Uh, it, uh, if it's if it's cheap, I'll get it. Yeah. 